Welcome back. Today we're going to be getting rid of this snorkel and replacing it with something just as functional, but invisible. I'll start off with some background for you. The reason that I have the snorkel, which I hate the way it looks, is because when I was trimming the fenders as one of the many steps to fit 35 inch tires, by the way, if you want a video on that, comment below. Uh, anyway, after I trimmed the fenders, I lost the wheel well liner. And the intake was right above the wheel well liner, right up in here. So the tires were just throwing things into the intake, you know, sand, rocks, mud, salt, all kinds of stuff, just straight into the intake. So I rerouted it up there with the snorkel. Um, like I said, I've always hated it. I've always been looking for an alternative because I can't just go back to the factory intake. Uh, and I found one, and that's what we're going to do today. If you don't already have a snorkel, then you're ahead of me. Because I do, and I have a giant hole in my fender. So I had to get a replacement, and one of the downsides of having a rare color is that I can't just find a replacement. So I had to order and have this painted from a local auto body shop. undecided on what I'm going to do about these here. Uh, I mean, I've got holes in my A-pillar now. I might just put the screws back into these plugs, how they were, uh, probably with some sealant. But unfortunately, it would take a lot of work to reverse that. So I'm just going to have to live with my poor choices. All right, so what we're going to do to replace the snorkel is what's called a cowl intake. And the cowl is the part of the vehicle uh, up here by the windshield wipers, so behind the firewall, which is this here. And what we're going to do is route the intake up there using, I have this 90 degree elbow here. And then we have some intake ducting. We'll reuse some from the snorkel. And then I have this little flange that will go up here. I'll have to move some of these wires. By doing it this way, we can get rid of the factory intake where it's going into the fender um, and redirect it somewhere where it's getting clean, high pressure air at the bottom of the windshield there. And it'll also be you know, a high uh, level intake. So as far as water fording depth, which I don't really do that much of anyway, uh, it'll still be high up there. So it will be better than the factory intake um, for multiple reasons. And the theory that I have, we'll have to test it once we actually finish this, is that um, the base of the windshield is a high pressure area when you're like on the highway going fast. So it could theoretically act as a sort of a ram air intake, you know, helping to force the air down into the intake. Now, it's just a theory of mine. We'll see how that works. Um, I've, I've taken some before, before numbers with miles per gallon and things like that, and I'll take some after as well. And then we'll give it the old butt dyno test as well and see how that goes. So anyway, that is the solution, is the cowl intake. So let's go ahead and do it.
Okay, I got a good view of the uh, cowl for you now, so you can see what I was talking about. So again, here's the intake. I'm gonna go through the firewall here, and this is what's called the cowl. So this is the uh, cabin air intake. You can see the filter way down in there. So you get to that by the glove box. Anyway, so yeah, this panel here is what we're gonna go through. And then the intake will be up there, above the hood. Making progress, slowly making progress. And I wanted to show you about where this would be on the vehicle. So the area we're gonna be punching through is about right here. So you can see that there's not a whole lot of uh, vents right above it. So I'm not too worried about water coming down and kind of like splashing on top of it directly into where the intake now will be. Uh, what I may do is cut some more holes around it to allow airflow in because right now the only vents that are in that cowl is purely for the HVAC system, air conditioner, heater for the cabin. So I may drill a few more holes in there, but I'm going to try to keep that same principle where there's no direct area where water could go straight into the intake. So to drill through the firewall, you need a hole saw. Uh, I have this one here left over from when I did the snorkel. It's 92 millimeters which is about three and a half inches, plus or minus a bit, I don't recall exactly. Ideally, you'd use around a three inch, maybe a little bit bigger, three and an eighth. Um, but I think this one will work because I have them using this flange fitting to go with it, and it's got a pretty big lip on it, so um, that should work all right. Uh, so all I need to do is mock up where I'm gonna do it and then drill a giant hole in my firewall. Yeah. That's the cowl intake. Now I've been driving the truck for a week or two and I think my theory was correct. I've definitely noticed an increase in gas mileage, about one to two miles per gallon. There is a bit more uh, intake noise because it's right next to the HVAC intake. Sounds pretty good, so I'll take it. Uh, I think it came out really nice. Um, the new fender looks great, I'm happy with it. Uh, obviously I still have these three holes up here. That is what it is. Uh, I'll deal with it. I didn't intend to delete while I was at it because I'm an audiobook and Spotify addict now. <laughs> so uh, I'll put a link to this little plug in the description if you also uh, don't want your antenna. Lastly, you guys have been asking for a walk around of the truck. Or rather, I said I would do one and I will. It will be a two-parter, one for the truck itself and another for the camper that I built. So keep your eye out for them. They'll be out soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, would appreciate your subscription if you don't mind. And if you didn't like the video, download the shit out of it.